Go. Going the wrong way. Meetings, everyone. I'd right, like to call the meeting to order. And the first order of business, please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. So, sorry for the cramped quarters. We originally had thought there was going to be a meeting in the big hall, and uh, we got here and there's no one there, and they said, well, they're done. Well, they're all set up for this room with all the recording, everything like that, so that's why we ended up here. Um, we'll see. Uh, roll call, please. I am going to roll call the board of directors for the Regional Development Corp, who will be the ones who will be voting on the um, actions that we take today. So, Harry Booth. Beth Gillis, in attendance. Beth Hunt? Here. Ron Jackson? Pete Keenan? Here. Dave O'Brien? Yes. John Strau? Yes. So we have a quorum? Yes. I need a motion for the approval of minutes from October 4th, 2018 and March 25th as mailed. I'll make that motion. Motion by John. Do I have a second? Second. From Pete? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried? Opposed? Treasurer's report. Mr. Nolet, would you please honor oh, us with the treasurer's report? The March 25th meeting, as well, meeting minutes as well. You did both at the same time. Oh, okay. Mr. Nolet, please. So, uh, everybody has a copy of the financials that are labeled Regional Development Corporation in front of you. I give it to everybody, not just the seven directors. So. Beth will probably touch on this later, but uh, the auditors have completed their review of the 2018 uh, financials. We have our reports back from them, and there's no, no findings, which, you know, good thing. They've got some management comments in there, and again, Beth will be going over this later, but uh, they, they've highlighted some of the, the stuff that we've been talking about. Uh, one of the conversations that will continue, whether it's today or in the future, obviously, is the sustainability of this corporation and our ability to be able to pay back the USDA payments um, that are due over the next uh, few years. So we've. I've taken a look at that, and whenever the board is ready, we can delve into that. It's probably not going to be today, but just to put it on your radar that that, that issue is still a real issue for the corporation. Yes, but you've done some projections going forward? I have. I just didn't know when you wanted to. to well, I think, be, I think because it's been a concern of all of us, we might want to jump in at least a good overview of it. <laughs> So what I've been able to ascertain, if everybody makes their scheduled payments to their completion, uh, in 2024, the corporation will actually be $6,300 in the hole, but it will come out of the hole in the following year. So there, there may be a, a need for some short-term monies to get through that pump. That's the one scenario where the RDC could actually make it to the end of its commitment. There, there is a scenario where it can actually make it to fulfill all its obligations. Um, it has that one year where it's going to dip below the, you know, below the line, and then it will, in the next year, come back across. That, however, being said, is with everybody making their scheduled payments. We, we have, as you're aware, we have one problem payer in that fund that if that loan actually goes bad, then the cash projections, there is no cash projection that shows that fund making its obligations past 2023. So that, that's what I know as we sit today. I think the loan you are questioning is, the current balance is 49501 
Sounds about right. So that's about, well, that's as of 12:31. About the same right now. Uh, that loan is being refinanced. So um, that's part of that. So yes, it is. It's going to be close, but we have made our payment for June. And we will. And we will and make, we'll make our December payment. Yep. And that includes any other expenses, legal expenses, and accounting expenses required to cover it. Even even without that, even without that debtor, we we can make our payments through 2023. Even even without that debtor, the problem is the payments that happen after that. Mm -hmm. Good. Anyone have any questions on that, Ron? Chairman, yes, um, it, is this something, uh, Mr. Chairman? Is this something we should uh, contemplate uh, maybe having a a modest uh, reserve against, uh, even if it was just a, a small. Uh, on, the, on the books, we do, sir. Uh, but there's no, there's no ability at this point to have a cash reserve. No, no ability because it, it, there isn't one dedicated to it, or there's not. The cash just doesn't exist. The cash doesn't <laughs> exist. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, we're literally living off the, those monthly incomes that are coming in now. Okay. To, to make it to, to tomorrow. <laughs> All right, I see. Yeah. But it, uh, there. there there has been some thought about potentially refinancing some of those into some of the RLF fund, other RLF funds. Like we don't know if it's feasible or legally possible, but that's one idea we had. Uh, I can tell you that that will hurt your cash flow. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that, but it would solve one problem on one side, create another problem on the other side. Right. So we, right. I do understand that, but to close out the RDC, I mean, we're paying. Was it three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars a year, just in a audit for it, for six loans? We asked the question of USDA because this is a wind down fund. Do we have to do an independent audit? The answer was very quickly yes. Even I knew the answer, but I thought I'd ask anyways just to get lucky. There's a year where we'll be down to one loan, mm -hmm. and even when there's just that one loan, it will still require an independent audit. Uh, so that's but well, but Al, but Al, if that when these loans mature. If we have paid off USDA, I think that that's projection showed we paid off before that date. I think that re relieves us of, of any requirements from USDA. The minute you take one dollar of interest in, you will have to have an audited financial. No, yeah. we just don't charge interest then. It'd probably be cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> if you are open, you will be audited. Period. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Al? Thank you. It's not better news. Uh, Four years old. That's good news. You want to have a proof of the report? Okay, motion to approve the report. Got to be for the RDC members. Beth? Second by John Stroh. Other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next? is the, in, the independent the 2018 audit. So um, the audit was emailed to all the members of the RDC. It's also on the website per our Paris requirements and I just handed hard copies to all the RDC board members. So as Al mentioned there were no findings. Um, EFPR did a great job. I think they were very easy to work with um, and so I, I welcomed their refreshing help. I don't know if you want to say anything more about it, Al. No, and about and the audit. What, what we had to work with. Honestly, I'm, I'm impressed with, with the group for the, the amount of time they, they spent a week with me, and we we went through you know the entire year. We rebuilt it together, and I showed them everything that I did, and we were able to justify everything. So we've got you know we've got clean numbers. We know what they are. We know where they come from. I, I give them a lot of credit because it wasn't uh, your what I would consider a typical uh, independent audit. It's a little different than that. <coughs> Any other questions? Motion to accept the independent audit. Dennis, I have a second. Oh, Dennis doesn't vote. Oh, Dennis does not have order. No. John. What am I doing here? Second by Beth. 
All in favor? Aye. We're in the RDC, Dennis. Aye. Sorry. Yes, okay, next was the approval of 2018 Paris report. So now that we have the 2018 audit, we can complete and submit the Paris report that we have been waiting to do. So I emailed everybody a copy with the meeting notice. I didn't um, make copies because it's kind of long. But I just wanted to touch on a couple of things, and then we have to um, have a, a motion to approve it. So as I've mentioned in the past, you'll probably notice if you went through it and looked on a lot of the questions that say, do you have this policy, do you have this committee? The answer is no, because as of 12 31 18, we didn't. As of, I think it's 3 25 19, we do. So in March, we shored up all that and got all the policies in place that are required of us, put the committees in place that are required of us, um, and did that. Going through the rest of the report, uh, the RDC does not have any staff. The RDC does not have any board compensation. The RDC does not have any subsidiaries. The only outstanding debt are our payments to USDA. Uh, the RDC does not have any real property. It doesn't have any property to dispose of, therefore it has not disposed of any property. We don't give grants. Um, I put all the loan information in the report, so the six loans are in there. We don't have any bonds. <coughs> we uploaded the 2018 audit. We don't have any investments. And the one that I emailed you said that we didn't have any procurement, but that actually um, was incorrect. When I first read the rules, I read them as um, anything that was a one-time purchase of 5000 or more had to be reported as a procurement. And I went through the rules again, but it actually also includes cumulative to the same vendor over the year. So in 2018, um, the RDC paid CEFCO a total of $6,361.25. So I'll just change where it says no transactions on the page for procurement. I just have to add, I've actually already done it, um, add that in. So they'd be the only ones that were over a cumulative of $5,000 for the year. Any questions for the Paris report? Ron? Yeah, Th just on a uh, timing question, timeliness question. Uh, it's late. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, um, I mean, what are your thoughts going forward about getting the audit in, in, in a Paris timely fashion? It will be, yeah. So EFPR, so what was holding us up was the audit. We didn't have the 2018 audit. You can't submit the report without having uploaded the audit. I remember the cut update on Paris, but I... It's I, March 31st. I was going to say it's yep. earlier. So um, we have a three-year contract with the EFPR. This is their first year. Um, so next year they know, they know we have to go into Paris. They know that the financials have to be done so we can submit Paris by March 31st. Um, because the RDC doesn't have a lot of the things I just talked about, the Paris reporting isn't that daunting now that I've done it for a year and I know what goes into it. Um, so the, uh, yeah, next year we will be on time. I have complete faith. Any further questions? Motion to approve the Paris report. John, Beth. Beth and John. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 2020 budget for Paris. Yeah, so Paris also requires that you put in a budget by November 1st for the following year. So this being our meeting, um, I've got the, the 2019 that we had put in, um, the 2020 that's estimated, and then the proposed 2021. Uh, the only thing that has changed um, is when we end up paying off USDA. So we have one more payment in 2020 to USDA on one of them. Um, and so our payment of principal bonds will go down for 2021 but 2020 is um, pretty much the same budget as 19. Any questions? Motion to approve the budget for 2020. John Stroh, second. Beth Hunt, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Else? <coughs> I just wanted to touch on um, new members. So our bylaws say that directors of the regional planning board are members of the regional development court. So because we have some new members of the regional planning board, 
Um, I just wanted to note that Carl Weiss has taken over for Al Rasco for Clinton County. Um, Mike Tyler has taken over for Mike Marnell in Essex County, and Brian Wells has taken over for Dan Wilt in Hamilton County as a member of the RDC. Okay. Any other business to come, Al? Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, Chairman, that some of the members might care about is um, for the RDC, I also filed their 990 and that was on time. Yes. For those of you that are interested in that. Mm -hmm. uh, that filing because it is a not-for-profit that has to be done as well. Okay. But we did get that done and, and get it done on time. Anything else? Um, I'll adjourn this meeting. I will then open the Regional Planning Board meeting at 1, 20 and 30 seconds. Uh, roll call. Rodney Brown. Present. Pete Keenan. Here. Patty Waldron. Here. Harry McManus. Kimberly Davis. Carl Weiss. Charles Harrington. Uh, Ron Jackson. Michael Tyler. Sean Gilliland. Mike Diskin, Chris Garrow, John Frey, here. Christy Wilt, here. Brian Wells, here. Bill Farber, here. Beth Hunt, here. Tracy Aldridge, here. Dennis Dickinson, here. Edna Frazier, here. John Strau, here. Ron Conover, here. Mike Swan. Here. Kevin Hajos. Matthew Hicks. <coughs> Richard Moore. Here. David O'Brien. Here. Bob Hankey. Here. Alan Olette. Present. Deb Donahue. We do have a quorum. So the first order of business is to motion to approve the minutes from April 18th, 2019. I have a motion, please. Hey. John Fry, do I have a second? Patty Waldron, uh, any omissions, corrections? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A reminder that uh, Beth has mailed out the training for the sexual harassment work and, and uh, workplace violence we're all required to to take and there is a uh, quiz that you need to fill out and return back to us um, if you have completed that training with another organization if you can get certification or something that says just send it to Beth and we can check you off so but for those of you who have not please pay attention to uh, Beth's email about completing that so we can keep our records straight because it's coming down. There's less than 90 days until a deadline date. As I got an email reminding me from someone. But uh, like I said, if you take it with another organization, please just provide a certificate or something that says you've already taken the course and when you've taken it. So thank you. Also, we had some financial disclosure statements sent out. And I think that there are some people who still need to complete their financial disclosure statements and complete and send them in, please or Beth will be after you. Treasurer's report. <coughs> I'm gonna, I'll walk you through real quick what's in the packet and then uh, I'll talk to you about a couple of things. The first sheet is a sheet that you've been used to seeing from me. It's the combined statement for the entire agency. The next four sheets are independent financials for the operating fund and each of the RLFs, where I take a dive into just that specific organization, its assets, its liabilities, its revenues and expenses for the year. So you can look at it as a whole, or you can look at it in its pieces. So I know everybody's mind works a little bit differently, so I try to get to you. One of the new sheets that I gave you, 
looks a little bit like this here. This is really just a load analysis. It shows where everybody's balance ended up 1231, how much principal and interest they've paid through June 30th this year to give you your new new balance. And this sheet is a sheet that you're used to seeing from me here. So it's kind of the, the same but different as the one before. Again, everybody's mind works a little different, so I try to give you the tools that, that make sense to each of you. As far as the financials go, um, as at our last meeting, I'm pleased to report that the, the organization financially uh, has turned a significant quarter, corner. Its, its cash flows are greatly improved. It's paying its bills to Washington County on time. Uh, there hasn't been a month. Yeah. There hasn't been a month yet, uh, other than months where I was late billing them, but they were late paying. So uh, I, I appreciate that, and it shows that there have been significant gains in cash flows and collections over the past year. <coughs> You'll see that. Uh, RLF4, there was a question earlier about reserving some funds, <coughs> and uh, in, in the RLFs here, well, we, we have the allowance for uncollectibles, and that kind of does the same thing. So you'll, you'll notice that I've got a, a rather large allowance in the RLF4, but there are two significantly delinquent loans <coughs> in that fund that have made zero principal payments this year. So Dave and Beth can talk to you about the collection efforts on those two debtors. Um, so anything that they can accomplish this year can only improve my numbers. My numbers literally, and Richie and Bob will tell you that this is what they expect from me, my numbers are worst case. So this, this presentation in front of you is if everything goes to hell in a handbasket, these are the numbers. Uh, Beth and, and Dave can talk to you about the collection efforts on those two loans and uh, another loan that has four loans with us, they may want to update you, uh, update you on those loans and those collection efforts because they could significantly change these numbers. But I just wanted to explain why the RLF4 specifically is such a large percentage of its outstanding loan balance. It literally represents two loans that have received no principal at all this year. With that, I'll take any questions that you might have. If you take this stuff home and you, you have a question later, please don't ever be afraid to reach out to me. You know, this isn't your one your one swing a day apple here. If, if you need to ask me a question, Beth knows how to get me, and I'm not hard to find. Ron, I um, I'm wondering if uh, the idea. I don't know, Mr. Chairman, you might have mentioned it, but the idea of uh, somehow converting. Uh, the one loan program over and then we'd have the savings, uh, audit, other kinds of savings that would help. I mean, we're going to be responsible for non-payment anyway, right? Uh, I mean, is, that, is, that, is there some viability to that idea? Okay. Al, could you ask concern about the cash flow? Well, no, it, it, it's an absolutely legitimate question and it's an absolutely legitimate uh, option except for one hesitation. The only lingering fear that I have, the consequence of defaulting on a USDA loan is the corporation can no longer receive federal funds. I continue to be concerned, much like the Tabasco Asset Securitization Corporation that were set up on whether or not the RPB is shielded from that default. I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV, so I, I won't give you advice other than I have a concern about the severability of those two organizations uh, if, if the default has to occur. I think from my standpoint is, as we've talked about it and thought about it, um, RLF4, and I'll break down sort of backwards, RLF-4 was for disasters caused by Irene to mitigate circumstances. 
That fund is the one that has the largest balance to it. Unfortunately, we cannot use that for um, any other purpose for, for mitigation of RLF 4. If we take the rest of the funds, I think, I can't remember which one's the stronger one. Well, RLF 1 has the biggest balance. Has the biggest balance. If we take that money and put it <coughs> to do just that conversion, that sort of erases our ability to give loans because that's our biggest balance. So we really need to really balance that about getting going out and loaning that money out because that helps pay our operating expenses that we can draw for it and uh, expenses of the loan funds. So I think we need to balance that with that. Um, right now, I think that there were some loans between interfunds and most of those have been cleared up already. So that took some of our cash flow, but it made the funds correct anyways, made the operating operating fund a little stronger. But uh, I think we need to at least give it another six months to see what happens. See what happens with a couple of these problem loans we had. One we just refinanced in the RDC. The other one we are in the process of refinancing. So I, I really like to take a little more cautious approach. And as long as you can make the payments through this year, I'd be happy to say that way then address it at a later date. There is some funds, excuse me, there have been some loans that have come stronger who found that they needed extra financing and were able to graduate to go to a regular lender. So maybe some of those will happen. You know, we can pay attention to those. We could also encourage we could also potentially encourage people to look for financing at a lower rate. So it depends on the strength of the organization, their balance balances. But most of them have been in business for quite a while now, which makes them a stronger prospect for a regular loan regular loan fund. Yes, Ron. But the end game is to extinguish that. The end game is to extinguish that. I mean, Absolutely. That's where I'm going. The Absolutely. timeliness of it or what how, how it happens is it still exactly up in the happens, air, but, but the it's... The mechanics will be the hard part. Right. I think we all share the same goal. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's not a sustainable fund mm -hmm. anymore. It's David, if I might, one of the interesting things, uh, an interesting problem this organization has, because it's not used to it, EDA actually has maximum cash, cash limits that you can hold. So you can only, you can only keep so much cash on hand, mm -hmm. and then your options are to reloan it or to give it back. So we we have these three revolving loan funds that are are now stronger, mm -hmm. are rapidly, and one of them is like literally just below those thresholds. I would I would say that by the next time we get together, we're going to have some conversations about whether or not how we want to proceed. Uh, because we are going to have to make decisions or EDA will make them for us. So we are either going to help some businesses with that money or we're going to let EDA sweep it back because we're rapidly approaching those those thresholds. Uh, that just shows where we've come financially in a year. And the stopgap may be to convert some of those loans over. Right, because if I understand it, I don't plan to fully understand it completely, but if I understand it generally, is as as we repay, the portfolio gets, it, the monies we got, we repay, but it, it, as you said, it requires like the perfect storm in terms of repayment to get to get to, to zero or near zero. In the RDC. Right. Mm -hmm. To get to zero or near zero. And um, should it not be that perfect storm, then it ends up in the deficit, mm -hmm. and then there's no money to repay. Right. right, and so that becomes the sort of the the matter, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. So, but clearly, uh, Beth, you and everybody's got their eye on the on the matter. We're keeping our eyes on it. Okay. If you told me the situation a year ago, I wouldn't have believed all of it. Well, a little more than a year ago. No. Maybe I should have had my head examined, but. No, 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 you're doing good. You keep going, Mr. Chairman. So I'll take a motion to I'll take a motion. If no other question, I'll take a motion to adopt the to accept the uh, treasurer's report. So moved. Richie Moore, do I have a second? Yes. Pete Keenan. 
Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, need a motion to accept the April through June 2019 abstracts. Motion by Edna. Do I have a second? Second. It was Rodney, was it? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Um, any for discussion? Albert? Mr. Chairman, just a, a question for your board, sir. Uh, would these abstracts under the category, uh, because we've always done it that way, these continue to be provided to you uh, because they always were? Uh, we at least stopped having all the board members have to sign off on them, which is a great time saving. I guess my question to the board is, A, do you still want them? And if yes, you still want them in this forum. Uh, because again, now that now that I'm doing your financials for you, if you really want to see a, a detailed log of payments, that can pretty easily be provided to you out of the accounting system without that staff having to manually continue to track this stuff. So whatever the appetite of the board is, and I mean, if, you know, maybe Beth doesn't care, but redundancy is not always one of my favorite things. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, whatever the board wants to see, we can provide them however you want to see it. If you want to continue to, to receive detailed vendor payment information, we can give it to you other ways or we can, can continue doing what you have in front of you. So I would be, I'd be interested in seeing the other ways. Uh, I do think it's important that the board see the detailed okay. payments. How, how is that provided? Sorry? Oh, that's provided. We can evaluate that and present it. So what I'll do is when we close July, I'll send you and Beth a sample of what I'm talking about. And then if you all want to disseminate it to the board to see what their appetite is, that'd be fine. That's wonderful. Anything else, Al? No, thank you for your note. My note. Okay. Did we? You got a vote. Oh, we got a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we will jump to Christy in the Loan Committee Report. Okay, uh, we've had two meetings. We had a May meeting and a June meeting. Um, we did have a loan application from Brian Hosan of Nine Mile Coffee in Scroon Lake. He opened his business last year with a partner. partner owns 19% of the business and they have a separate uh, 708 partnership uh, to purchase the building. They received uh, funds from the Scroon Lake RLF to buy the building. Uh, the application was uh, that he gave us was complete and it was thorough, it was well thought, thought out, but it was lacking uh, adequate uh, collateral. Uh, and his projections did not show a capacity to repay the loan. Uh, Mr. Hosen explained that there was a manager salary included in his projections of 30000 a year, and he also has a, another business uh, which will subsidize his coffee shop um, project. And he will work 15 to 20 hours per week at this business. Um, we asked him to see if his partner would give a personal guarantee and if he would be interested in a second mortgage on his residence and he had to go back and discuss those items with his uh, partner and his wife. So at that point the committee agreed to wait for more information. Um, the second uh, loan we discussed was Mr. Brand of All uh, Brands Redemption Center. He was requesting a loan to consolidate all four of his loans into one to avoid uh, foreclosure. Mr. Brand gave the committee an overview of his business and asked for one loan. Beth explained that a modification can only encompass three of the loans in the RPB, uh, totaling a little over $190,000 plus fees, and that um, we can't commingle the two funds, so it would, the least we could do would be two loans. So um, he was told that adequate collateral was necessary to consider his request. Um, upon investigating his request, uh, it was discovered that there are three workers' comp liens, uh, about $106,000 from past years against him personally, um, and his house, which is currently on the mortgage on the market, um, has a $154,000 mortgage on it. 
The committee discussed the modifications and stated that if the loan became uh, late again, it would resume our uh, foreclosure efforts. We also agreed that the language of the loan modification, if he is to sell the business or part of the asset that is not real property, that those payments directly go against the loan balance and not to him personally. If he owns the building, I believe his wife's uh, hairdresser shop is in that building. He's talking about selling the business aspect and then he was going to get the loan payments for that and we were not comfortable with, or with that. So um, we discussed a loan of 5% uh, interest for 10 years with a $50,000 balloon at the end. If he became 15 days late, it would go up to 6.5% interest with, with the same balloon. If he became 30 days late, uh, we would immediately resume a foreclosure effort. Um, he would also be asked for $3,000 down payment and he does employ uh, eight to ten people. Um, the loan modification proposal was agreed to by the committee and was being sent to the executive committee for approval because it was over $100,000. At our June 25th meeting, we revisited the loan application for Nine Mile Coffee and the committee members were still concerned over the lack of collateral against the loan. Um, Mr. Hosan reduced his loan request to $25,000 and does not want to put a second mortgage on his home. He's seeking a loan to purchase coffee making and restaurant equipment. Uh, he's going to forgo some renovations uh, with a lower loan amount. He wanted to put up uh, $30,000 in equipment against the loan. The loan committee decided to approve this loan for $25,000 for five years with 6.5% um, interest rate and a six month grace period to ensure his success. Um, the committee is requesting serial numbers for all equipment held as collateral. Uh, we reviewed uh, some of the late, late loans. Um, we received a request uh, from Willow's Bistro to lower her interest rate, uh, but it was denied as the building is for sale. Uh, Scroon Lane Campground loan was discussed. Loan payments were reduced to $120 a month when they were having problems in 2012 and they didn't pay for 72 days but are paying in a timely manner now. It was suggested that a letter stating that we would like to see the monthly payment amount return to the original amount. Um, Jay's Heating has been paying under his new modification terms and All Brands Redemption Center was discussed again and awaiting a response from the executive committee. Um, three more loans we discussed were Anton Cooper of Cooper Logging. Uh, he, we discovered that he owes uh, back taxes and if they were not paid by July 12th, it would go into foreclosure. We have the option to pay those taxes and installments to stay the foreclosure. The executive committee agreed to pay. Um, the executive committee would agree to pay the taxes if absolutely necessary. Uh, there are multiple interests in the real property owned by Mr. Cooper. He owes us $142,902.07 at this time. Uh, Michael Finnegan of the North Country Club restaurant has both his house and restaurants on the same mortgage. <coughs> He's being served and personally sued for the $45,000 plus dollars he owes us. And we're still pursuing the Adirondack Meat Company loan. I think that's... Okay. With Anton Cooper, uh, we finally received a judgment from the court and ability to appoint a referee. Now it is, we did pay the $6,200, I forgot what the exact dollar amount was, we did pay that based on um, if we didn't, we would have lost our lien on it. Thanks to Mike Swan, he helped us out through this process. Uh, it's my understanding that Mr. Toomey, Mr. Um, Cooper is in the process of declaring bankruptcy. So it's going to be a race to get the property sold versus him filing bankruptcy. I bet you filing bankruptcy wins. At which point we'll just have to wait, petition, wait to petition the court to go ahead with the sale. Um, he expects the other thing that's with Mr. Cooper is that one of his, from what I'm told, one of his goals in the bankruptcy is to be able to log the property and uh, hopefully receive some assets. Uh, we'll be going to court if that happens prohibit him from doing that because one of the collaterals we have is the timber on the property. So mm -hmm. that's where we're going with that. Uh, Mr. Finnegan just declared bankruptcy. 
we have sued him for we didn't do a foreclosure against a fine advice of attorney we didn't do a foreclosure on the building we did a uh, suit against his assets with him in foreclosure within uh, bankruptcy we're going to have to reevaluate that now and figure out we just received word today so we'll figure out where we're going from there we'll talk to our attorney uh, Mr. Brand is a workout situation I the value of the business really isn't there because he hasn't really operating it we're hoping that he'll be able to improve the value of the business um, and be able to work out the program if not we're prepared to continue bankrupt uh, foreclosure proceedings against him so we'll see any else to add on loans Beth oh I've not covered it we are fairly good on our collections we have some people that are late by a month but we pursued a lot of them and a lot of them have come back to paying on time so that's good uh, we need a couple need a little more encouragement they go 30 days and keep on paying up but they're always 30 days behind but at least we're getting some revenue from that but uh, carries on top of them lets us know what's happening if needed to contact the people and tell them hey listen let us have money hey, yes Al um, for the record, I just want to mention that there was one no vote at the executive committee on brand. Mm -hmm. That was me. Um, I would really appreciate the uh, entire board. I mean, I'll, I'll see it because of what I do for you. Mm -hmm. I would really uh, appreciate the entire board being kept appraised of the status of that specific debtor mm -hmm. uh, because he has a, a real a real bad record with us and he has a real potential large impact on the agency. So please continue to keep the entire group in the loop as that moves forward. Richie? Is that the one we uh, said you uh, the golden ticket at the end? The guy's in trouble, okay? Mm -hmm. Financially now. All you're doing is buying on time, but having it by adding a big balloon payment at the end. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think executive committee gives a lot of thought to uh, go approving this. It's already did. It's done. It's already approved. I understand that this is a as one of the bankers put it this is a workout program did he pay the three thousand dollars he's supposed to pay it at closing so we're trying to schedule a closing right now we have had our attorneys contact his attorney to schedule the closing date so yeah. <coughs> there's no one who looked at this loan really found other options for this at this point Any else questions for the loan committee? Bob? Uh, bank the brand. You said you he wanted to combine it all into one loan. You couldn't because that's because he's got some with the RDC and some with... There, there's one loan with the RDC. And that that's the one that can't be combined with the two that's others. That's correct. Three, three, three others. others. Four, three. Okay. Yeah, so there's, there's four total loans. The first one was provided to Mr. Brand personally, so um, that can't be combined with the ones that were provided to the LLC. So we're actually going to end up with three new notes, one for the personal loan. The second and third loan he was provided through the LLC will be combined, and then the RDC is going to be re-amortized. Okay, that, that's what I wasn't getting. You're going to have actually three. Cause It'll end up being three. We had hoped it was, to put. It when you first said like there was going to be two. We well, we we hoped it had, but what would have happened is we would have lost our position and on on a lot of our liens against him. And he honestly has so many that we don't want to lose the position right. that okay. we have and go behind everybody yeah, else. Was, so the the twos and the threes weren't adding up. To yeah, the it was. Our position is bad enough. We don't need a lot of lawyering. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Beth, RLF risk letters. Yeah, so this is something that EDA started last year. They provide um, a risk assessment for the RLFs every year. So the ones that I sent you um, were for fiscal year ending 2018. So they took information um, that we provide on reports and do this risk rating system. So um, each category can get up to three points and then they have an A, B, and C. And all that really determines is how often you have to report to the EDA. 
So if you are a level A, you report to the EDA once a year. If you're a level B, you report to them twice a year. If you're a level C, then you have to do a corrective action plan and, and there's more work involved. So the only thing that changed from last year was RLF 1 was downgraded from an A to a B, which we had anticipated because of all of the loan write-offs we did in 2018 reduced the um, capital base index that was being reported to EDA. So instead of, we, we took a lot of loans and wrote them off at one time, making it not look so great. And RLF 1 was on, I think it was a 40 last year, which is like the lowest you can be to be level A, and now we're at 38. Um, so we anticipated that, and it's not a big deal. We just report twice a year, which um, the reports do at the end of this month, and it's almost done. Um, and the other two have remained as level Bs, and those reports have already been submitted for June, and then we will do them again um, for year ending December. And my guess is RLF 4 is going to end up in the same position as RLF 1 pretty soon? It's still, it's, it's on there. Um, so if you look at RLF 4, it got a 1 for default rate. And the reason is because out of 10 loans, two have defaulted and they're both $150,000 loans. So it's, it's a big deal in that fund. It didn't kick it down below a B. It's still a B. It's a couple points lower, but it's still a level B. Anybody have a question? Rodney? Can you explain the, the, the low marks for timely and complete reporting and tenure? Yeah, so timely and complete reporting, um, because this is fiscal year ending 2018, the 2018 audit was, I'm sorry, the 2017 audit was not submitted in 2018 on time. So that's that. The tenure, they give points for how long someone has been in a position. Um, and so with Walter having been in a position for over, I think it's five years, gets you up to a three. Um, it was a three if you look at the ones from last year. Now it's myself and Al who have been in these specific roles for less than two years. So they, they put stock in tenure. Hmm? Yeah, it's not how well you do the job, just how many years <laughs> you've been there. Just how long you've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on the uh, reports? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Director's report. All right, so I actually figured, um, since Allison has been with us for a few months now and, and has been working on a lot of projects, that I would let her give her own report. So we'll start with the senior planner report and then we'll go into the director's report. So go ahead, Allison. Uh, sure. So let's see. Earlier this, a few, probably last month, I um, authored an EPA Recreation Economy Planning Assistance Grant for the Village of Speculator. Um, that is a grant that doesn't um, award money per se, but it does award um, technical assistance to uh, villages and towns via the EPA and their consultants. Um, so that award is to be announced at the end of the month. Um, in addition to that, I accompanied Beth on an EDA, the Economic Development Agency's visit to the region. We toured. Um, Clinton County, Washington County, Warren County, and um, showed him around some potential sites and some sites that the EDA has already invested in. Um, I have been managing a few grants, um, the, a Department of State grant that was awarded to the town of Horican. Um, that is for the Upper Hudson River Watershed Management Plan. Um, that plan is to be completed in March of next year. Uh, we anticipate the final draft to be completed in November of this year. Um, also, we have a Lake Champlain Basin Program grant that's for the Isle Lamont Watershed Management Plan in Clinton County. Um, that is to be completed by the end of November. Um, some, there are some state grants that I have applied to, a, a New York State Department of Environmental Conservation Climate Smart Communities grant uh, was authored for the Village of Speculator. Uh, and I am currently working on a water quality improvement program grant for a uh, shoreline stabilization project in the Village of Speculator. And that grant is to be completed and submitted by the end of this month. Um, we have a few of the water quality improvement program grants that are currently open that I've been managing. One that is 
has been awarded to the Franklin County Soil and Water Conservation District, and that's for um, Lake Champlain watershed roadside erosion implementation. So it's phase two of a program. Uh, these projects are based on the Lake Champlain Roadside Erosion Assessment Inventory that was authored by our organization. Um, the districts, there's five districts involved in that and they're continuing work. Uh, we also have a similar grant that's for the Upper Hudson Watershed and that contract just began in April so um, work is anticipated to start this month or the following month. Um, I continue to attend both um, water coalition meetings, it's Quickney, which is in the Champlain watershed and the Upper Hudson River watershed coalition and also water quality committee meetings in Essex, Cl Essex Clinton and Warren County. Um, I have been working with some local lake associations we'll just about finalized the Screen Lake watershed management plan addendum. Uh, I have just held a kickoff meeting for the Long Lake with the Long Lake Association for a management plan there and I'm continuing to work on a Shazy Lake management plan which will be done in conjunction with the aforementioned Isle Lamont watershed management plan. And uh, that's it. Been busy with <laughs> all of those. Any questions? Okay. So I've been continuing to work on a title for an economic development coordinator. There were some titles already in civil service um, at Warren County, so um, I was provided with those and we're just really trying to hone in on specifically what we want this job title to be and, and what we want this person to do. Um, again, working to complete the 2018 RPB audit. I had hoped to have a draft today, but we don't have it yet, but it should be coming very soon. That needs to be submitted to the Federal Clearinghouse by September 30th. Um, and so we um, are assured we're on track for that. There's no danger that that won't be met. We're, yeah, we're... The only reason you don't have a date is their lead auditor left the firm. The, the guy right, who, the guy that came to the office yeah, who left the firm. <laughs> that audit has left, so the other guys are trying to pick up his pieces. And, right. Uh, so it, there will be no problem getting that final time. Yep. Um, and develop the 2020 budget, which we'll talk about. Uh, the EDA planning grant, so the last time we met, that was a little bit in flux, so I am happy to say that that is approved. The three-year um, planning grant is approved. The 2019 contracts executed. All of the quarterly reports and everything have been submitted to EDA, so that's up, back up to snuff. Um, I've been working on some projects. Um, again, the North Creek wastewater system, trying to help the town um, basically put together funding packages between state and federal funding to see how that can get accomplished. Um, the Washington County FE1A project, we're looking at authoring um, a grant to the Economic Development Administration, and I'll, I'll talk about the visit um, in a little bit, but that came out of that visit. Um, wastewater upgrades in Washington County Sewer District Number 1, again, we're looking towards an EDA grant for that. Um, I've been a part of the Warren County Disaster Recovery Plan as someone representing economic development interests but also environmental interests and giving input on that plan. Um, I attended NATO's SEDS conference in Columbus, Ohio. So NATO is the National Association of Development Organizations. Um, the SEDS is the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy that each economic development uh, district has. So they have a program called Stronger SEDS, Stronger Regions. And um, there's a big kind of national kick to update the SEDS and update the way we do the SEDS. If you've looked at the old SEDS, it's a lot of regurgitation of statistics in the front. And um, people are kind of moving away from that, even doing online-only SEDS and that kind of thing. So it was really interesting. We spent a lot of time talking about opportunity zones as well. Um, EDA put out a press release right after the visit that said that there's priority for funding in opportunity zones. We also talked a lot about the tax credits and the kind of things that come along with those opportunity zones. Northern Borders Regional Commission, um, we assisted Washington County Fairgrounds, the Village of Speculator, and Washington County Sewer District with authoring their applications. We basically did the economic development questions for them. Um, provided letters of support to the Town of Essex and the Village of Whitehall. There were also a couple of informational ses sessions, one in Glens Falls, one in Pottsburg that I attended. Um, Allison mentioned the EPA Recreation Economy Planning Assistant grant. She did one for Speculator and I did one for the Village of Granville. 
so we're hoping to hear about those um, hopefully in the next few weeks. I think they had said end of July, so hopefully we'll get some news on that. And again, the EDA visit, I'll show you some fun pictures. Um, we were awarded one grant that had been applied to the Lake Champlain Basin Program for quantifying phosphorus reductions for proposed projects in New York, that big Lake Champlain Watershed Management Plan we have. Um, the DEC likes to see projected uh, phosphorus reduction numbers for the projects that you're doing, and they've come out with a calculator, and so you input a bunch of information into that. So that grant's actually to work with Warren County GIS, um, the planning department and the GIS department, to do that. So that will start beginning of next year is when that, pro that uh, grant work will begin. Um, I'm writing three grant applications, one in the town of Ticonderoga, um, one for cohort replacements throughout several of our counties, and then uh, one that Washington County has agreed to be the applicant for us um, for a regional green infrastructure assessment for flood attenuation. Really what I want to do is I want to hire a consulting firm to model projected increases in flow in our major river systems throughout the five counties and see which rivers and, most communi and communities are most vulnerable at the 100, the 250, the 500 year flood stage. And then I want to identify the existing green infrastructure assets, including open space and wetlands and floodplains to see what's there, um, to see how we can utilize those to help basically attenuate flooding and, and maybe make some better future land use decisions um, on those. So it's, it's, I have this big crazy idea and this is, the very beginning of it, but I think it's going to be really cool if it gets funded. Um, grant management, Allison mentioned the one she's doing. I'm doing some for Washington County. Uh, we're still waiting on a contract for the first one, but it should be any day now, I'm told. Um, and the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, that was a $1.1 million grant that we got um, for uh, agricultural environmental projects throughout 11 counties in the Adirondacks five years ago, and I've always said it's the grant that is never going to end and it ends 9.30 this year. So it's, now I'm kind of sad. Um, we've been doing it for so long, but it got a lot of good stuff on the ground. So that's exciting and that'll be over with. Um, we organized and hosted a meeting between the DEC and the Lake Champlain Basin Program. Uh, and the Lake Champlain Plain Basin Program is the federal entity that um, provides federal funding for projects within the Lake Champlain watershed. They spend a lot of their time and effort in Vermont, and we are trying to get them to spend a little more of their time and effort in New York. Um, the New York and the Vermont watersheds are very different, so we're just kind of trying to, to get ourselves better, them more knowledge of what, what we're doing in New York. Um, I did do a tour of Clinton County. I went around with um, Dave from the Soil and Water Conservation District to look at a whole bunch of uh, projects. So those are going to turn into grant applications once the Lake Champlain Basin Program opens their grant in October. Uh, the loan program we really talked about, um, like I said, we did the six-month semi-annual reporting. RLF 2 and 4 have already been submitted. RLF 1 I should be done with next week. We held our loan committee meetings. Um, the loan committee approved the loan to Nine Mile Coffee, so we're working through the closing on that right now. Um, the loan modification for Jay Lamica is completed and going well. He's making his payments. We're working through the loan modification for Joe Brand and Brand Redemption. We held the executive committee meeting where they agreed to do the loan modification and also to pay um, the back taxes to stop the tax foreclosure on Anton Cooper's property, which we did end up having to do this past Friday. Um, and we continue our legal actions against um, our delinquent loans. And AGFTC, we've been going to the meetings. Also, Carrie has um, started transitioning into doing AGFTC's reimbursement requests. So that's something that Aaron had been doing. Um, and so we're trying to work in Carrie because it's Aaron's office to our office to Aaron's office and it makes more sense for Carrie to compile everything and then send it to Aaron and I for review. So we've just started that process. Um, and they're also paying part of her salary. Yes, and AGFTC is also paying part of Carrie's salary for that service. Can you do me a favor and push the arrow on the presentation? Questions? Well, before we jump into a new topic. What? Well, let's separate that. Oh, okay. Any questions on what she's covered so far, Ron? Yeah, uh, just. Uh, Would, would it be, <coughs> it would be helpful, I don't know if you can do this right away, but it would be helpful if we could have 
if I can have um, an operating statement. There's a lot of good information here, but it's not cast against the operating budget. Uh, so, for example, uh, the operating budget would have so much budgeted for professional services, right? And then the operating statement would take all of these consulting fees and we'll put them against the, the operating, what we had in the operating budget uh, that was approved. So to, the operating statement on the budget will take all of this information and put, uh, Right. I, but I no. think you, it does help, but okay. the column that's missing is, the, is it, would, the well, it, would, it would show the budget, what was approved in the budget, and then it would show the variance to the budget. You follow what I'm saying? It's kind of, um, it, 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 it puts it in context of what the board has approved in terms of an operating budget for the year. And what's nice, Sean, is I just converted to a new accounting system June 1st. The next time we meet, you'll have new budget actual sheets that are generated by that system rather than me having to old school it. You're, right. You'll you'll get that automatically next time we. So we'll get together. that automatically, yes, just like you would in your municipal. Yes, sir. Oh, excellent. Very good. Because I think you have it. It's just that we have it now. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions for Beth before she moves on? You're up. Oh, okay. Again. 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 So um, in June, we had a visit from Ed Hummel. So he is the New York and New Jersey uh, representative from the Econo Economic Development Administration. When we write and put in EDA grants, he's the, ones that, he's the one that they go to um, for that. So he wanted to come up and kind of um, tour around our region, which we absolutely jumped at doing and having him um, come over. So he was here for three days, two and a half days. We took him around the region. Oh. So <laughs> Go ahead. Our first day, uh, we went to Essex County. So we went to the Mariah Business Park, which is an EDA funded business park. Um, EDA funded the infrastructure. The entire park is full. Uh, there's some um, health centers and whatnot there, but we ended up touring uh, the Whistle Pig Rye Whiskey. Um, they have large storage facilities there, and it was a hot day. And the second you opened the door to the uh, to the storage facility, you got a waft. I'll tell you, um, but it was just really cool. And we also um, toured in Pre-Tech. So Pre-Tech was the first um, business that moved into that park. They make brakes for airplanes. Um, so again, just kind of, did you know someone made brakes for airplanes in Mariah? Because I didn't. Um, Where's Mariah? Mariah's messenger. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky at the town isn't here. Um, Afterwards, we went to the um, town of Westport. Ike Tyler was um, nice enough to host us there. And we met with, well, oh, well, I forgot to mention, at the tour, we met Jody Olcott, who is the co-director of the Essex County IDA, um, and also Tom Skazafava, who is the town supervisor, and Joel Wood, now formerly of uh, Congresswoman Stefanik's office. Um, toured those with us. We all went to the town of Westport, where Supervisor Tyler was nice enough to host us. Um, Hannah Jocks, who is the project coordinator for um, planning in Essex County, was also there. And we spent a lot of time talking about um, wastewater infrastructure for economic development is kind of where the the conversation went on those. And then we drove up to Clinton County. Um, we went first to the Gateway Industrial Park in Beekman Town, so that's another EDA funded project that funded the infrastructure. Um, that's just a list of all the businesses are there. It's, it's full. Uh, we met Renee McFarland from the uh, County Economic Development up there. And then ended up, uh, from there, we went to the former Clinton County Airport in Plattsburgh, where we met um, Rodney was there, uh, Gary Douglas from North Country Chamber of Commerce. We had representatives from the Development Corporation um, were there to talk about a potential project for a new industrial park there as well. And then we went to the North Country Chamber of Commerce with that group of people to talk about um, to talk about additional economic development for that. Rodney, I don't know if you have anything you want to say. Yeah, we think one of our, our bright spots is the former airport. Uh, in 2007, we moved uh, Clinton County uh, Airport activities over to the former Plattsburgh International Airport, or the, the former Air Force Base, which is now Plattsburgh International Airport. And we have 500 acres of land now 
that have you know, uh, near access to water, sewer, water, uh, electricity, gas, uh, and it's flat. Uh, and uh, so we, it's also on the end of our Route 3 corridor. It's the next logical spot uh, for development. Uh, what we need is it's such a, a large facility, we've sold all of the properties that have road access. We need to bring a road and infrastructure into the interior of the parcel. And that's what we're in the process. Uh, we're near the end of completing an application to EDA for funding that would assist us in doing that. Yes, they've gone through the um, pre-application process. It's been approved and then have been invited to put in a full application. So that's where it's at right now. Yeah. Um, wasn't there a OCs or some kind of training school over there? Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, an aeronautical institute. Yes. Uh, they have a welding school. That they actually moved their district offices onto a 17.5 acre parcel. Well, they did at 747 there or something. They, they, they did. It was a FedEx blew the right. plane in, and they won't be able to fly it out. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they could have seen it land, but they're still there, right? Yes, they are. So that was our first day. Um, our next day, we went to Washington County. Um, so the first place we ended up going um, was the former GE dewatering facility. Um, there were representatives from Senator Schumer's office, Senator Little's office, Congresswoman Stefanik's office, the town supervisor, the village mayor, um, and a lot of other people. Chris DeBolt was there as well, uh, people involved in the project. When Senator Schumer was in the area a couple of months ago, he had said he wanted EDA to come up and talk to project partners about infrastructure needs. So we did that. Uh, from there, we went to Washington County Sewer District number two, uh, where we talked about um, a lot of infrastructure projects for funding that's needed in um, the village of Fort Edward and just outside. The good thing is the village, um, Fort Edward is an opportunity zone. So being an opportunity zone gives you an automatic 80-20 um, grant. So it would be, if it wasn't based on distress for our counties, would generally be 50-50 grants for EDA funding. Being in the Opportunity Zone gives you an 80-20. Um, from there, we went to the Village of Port Anne, where we met at the wastewater treatment plant, which has a lot of infrastructure needs. Unfortunately, EDA funding is linked to economic development, and they, they want to see that economic development is going to occur should they fund this project. And that's kind of a hurdle that we're trying to get through with Ford and um, the village proper itself. I, there's nowhere for a company to come in. Um, so I'm not sure if they're going to really have a good enough um, chance at doing a, a project for any wastewater treatment plant upgrades. Um, and then we went to the village of White Hall and walked around with some reps from the Chase and companies who were doing some planning efforts up there and the, the mayor and um, also KPS engineering who's working on um, wastewater infrastructure upgrades at both the plant and the uh, and in the system so again that's what we talked about and that's needing wastewater infrastructure upgrades and is there enough of an economic development um, narrative that we can we can put together to be able to get the village funding our third day uh, we went out to Hamilton County and so Christy met us out there um, and Jeanette Barrett, who's the new mayor of the village of Speculator, um, and some board members met out and we walked the main street and talked about, again, economic development needs in small Adirondack communities. Um, we went up and looked at some um, property that the IDA owns, and we also met with the new owners of Oak Mountain to kind of talk about what they're doing to help spur economic development. Um, Christy, I don't know if you want to add anything about the visit. I think I think the mayor did a good job in, in portraying um, the needs for the village of speculator and and you know the needs and the wants to kind of build around o Oak Mountain Ski Center and you know the, it would be nice for us to find a way to develop those those lots on their way up to the ski center. So and then our last stop. Um, was the town of Johnsburg in Warren County and we met with Supervisor Hogan um, and she was nice enough as it was raining to get us a bus and drive us around North Creek uh, not make us walk <laughs> but we did kind of a, a tour of the hamlet 
and pointed out the ski bowl and gore and kind of all the things that they have going on. What's going on in North Creek right now is they don't have a wastewater system and they're looking into getting one. And so I think that the, and again, Johnsburg is also an opportunity zone. So um, I think the EDA would be a good piece of that puzzle should that project come to fruition. So that's what um, we talked about there as well. And so that was the end of it. We spent, Allison and I spent a lot of time in the car with Ed. So we're really good friends now. <laughs> um, but I think it was worth it. Really, what I wanted to drive home to him because he had never been up this way is a couple of weeks before he came, I read an article that EDA had funded a project in New Jersey that was going to create a thousand jobs and millions of dollars in private investment. And I was like, welcome to the Adirondacks. That's not us. So I would just, you know, when applications start to come in from our communities, I want there to be a little context in his mind of 10, 15 jobs is a big deal around here in a lot of these communities. And um, so there hasn't been a lot of applications from our region going into EDA in the past few years. And my goal is to change that. They'll do up to $3 million um, for economic development projects. So if we can get the applications going in, then that's, that's what we're going to try to do. So, anybody have any questions about? He liked it up here. It's nice. <laughs> He's from Manhattan. <laughs> Quite a difference. He sees different trees down yeah. there. Yeah. We saw a lot of. We saw deer. We saw turkey. We there's wildlife. Yeah. He did. We gave him the Adirondack experience for sure. Out Mr. Nolet. Out of the out of the places you visited. Do you have any projects that really seem to strike his interest more than others? Are there, without, I mean, you don't have to get into them right now, but yeah. do you have some warm and fuzzies about some of the places that you want to concentrate on moving forward? He was incredibly interested in the Opportunity Zone projects, and the reason is because I, right after he came, EDA put out a press release that they are being um, pushed to fund, you know, their priorities to fund in Opportunity Zones. Um, so the, any of the projects in Fort Edward and um, Johnsburg are the ones that kind of came to the top. Um, that could be a, a nice narrative, I think, for them. Um, some of the other ones, as I mentioned, might be a little bit hard to, to be really build that economic development case. But we'll continue to work with him. And, and the great thing about um, Ed is that you can work with him while you're doing your pre-application. So it's not like he won't talk to you because you're working on a pre-application. If you call him with an idea, you know, um, he'll say, I don't know, that doesn't really, I don't know if that's really going to fit. Or, yeah, that sounds great. Pursue that. Um, he did do some of that. So definitely interested in the opportunity zone areas. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay. What's next? You have a 2019 budget amendment. Thank you. All right, so the 2019 budget, um, we have some amendments we would like. Oh, here it is. I have too many papers up here. Okay. Um, so on, you'll see the 2018 budget from what we could piece together, our 2019 budget. So um, rent to the town of Lake George, we underestimated um, by $1,020. And I think that's because a payment got lost out of the year. Um, but it really is $5,520. So we need to increase that um, legal. Once we started all of these actions with the RLFs, our, our legal bills have gone up significantly. Um, by the end of June, we had spent $6,200 in legal. The good thing with, with those is the way that the RLFs are structured. In the regulations, it says once you get a payment back from any kind of delinquent legal action, this is the way that you um, pay things back. And the, one of the first is legal fees. So you pay the RLF back for the legal fees, then you do um, penalties and interest, and then if there's anything left over, it goes back into the principal. So I'm hoping there's a light at the end of the tunnel where some of that money will come back, but we do need to increase the line item so that we can continue to pursue the legal um, 
legal actions that we have been taking. Um, the audit, we need to increase the line item budget because we ended up paying for half of the 2017 audit in 2019. So our um, contract with EFPR says that we will pay $12,900 for the audit, but we also paid $6,050 to Marvin and Company in 2019 for the 2017 audit. So being a line item, we have to increase the line item for that as well. Um, and then also operating expenses, we really underestimated the operating expenses, but we also it, it comes down to doing more work is more overhead. There's more copies. We have new phones. Our internet contract, we have tried to negotiate down, but it hasn't gone very well for us. Um, we have some new subscriptions to things like GoToMeetings that we didn't have before, so I'm asking to increase um, that as well. So to offset those in the revenue category, um, the county allocations came in 2019, came in $7,000 more than we had budgeted for. Um, because Warren and Washington and Clinton um, gave more funding um, voluntarily. Our New York, State, New York State DEC contract, we had budgeted at 6,500 because we don't usually get that letter until March of the year that says what your next um, fiscal year is going to be and it ended up being 97. 770. And so that's something that we can put staff time and overhead towards a grant that we can do. Um, and also our water quality grant admin, we hadn't budgeted for any of the grants that we wrote in 2018, which were awarded in December of 2018, and then we start pulling admin off of in 2019. So because we didn't know if we had gotten those grants, we put the budget together, we didn't budget for them, but we did end up um, having some grants awarded that we're now pulling admin money for, so that's increased as well. So the simplistic, the bad news is the <laughs> expenses increased by $25,000 more than we thought. <coughs> the good news is we got more room to recover that. So um, I would ask for a uh, motion to do those adjustments. I'll make a motion. Oh, Patty made the motion. Second by John. Discussion, questions? Second by who? Thanks. Any further questions, discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. So our next item of business is the budget and salary schedules. For 2020, as required, we're supposed to submit them to the uh, counties by the end of July so we can start their budget process and our budget process. I would like to uh, sort of start off with something. When a number of us got introduced to the Regional Planning Board, all we heard about was the state of loans, state of loans, state of loans. And I, for one, having not really known about the Regional Planning Board, what had done before, <coughs> uh, really found out that the Regional Planning Board is much, much more than the planning pro than, than the grant the loan programs. I'm still amazed to learn the opportunities out there that Beth continues to find that her suggestion as senior planner really came out very well and we have a great addition to the staff. But as Beth reminds me, the different programs you're looking at, there's a lot more that we could potentially do for the counties in terms of grants, grant management. She just pointed out with EDA, uh, who were the, uh, who, who were partners with in this entire program, or part of our programs, has money available. And I think that everything I've seen leads to more and better things for the Regional Planning Board. And if you had told me a year ago, this is where we'd be, and this is the types of things we've done and the depth and breadth of what we do here, and the importance to all the counties, I would not have fathomed what you meant until today. And I think as our meetings have gone on, we've seen the depth and breadth of what we can do and where we are, but I think we're uh, extremely lucky and fortunate to have come the round robin to where we are today. 
But I think as you go through the 2020 budget, uh, Beth will point out some other areas we're looking at and where we can go. So without that, I'll turn it over to Beth for the budget. Okay. So the um, 2020 salaries include um, funding for the director's position, the senior planner, the senior account clerk, and also full-time economic development coordinator. If you remember last year when we talked about that position, we budgeted for half a year. Um, and we this year we're budgeting for a full year. That being said, we've also um, increased the amount of um, salary based on the type of person that we're going to need to do the work that we're going to need them to do. Um, fringe for employees has stayed about um, stable because not all of us take health insurance um, through the regional planning board. Um, fringe for retirees, again, is pretty steady. Um, insurance, workman's comp, rent, um, legal, I'm hoping we'll stay to $75 <laughs> next year, we'll see. Um, but I did increase that from last year based on what we've been working through um, this year and learning how slow the legal process is. Um, accounting we know is at ten thousand dollars that's to washington county audit we know will be 12 9 because we have that three-year contract with efpr um, credit reports we found that we pay a hundred and fifty dollar um, fee to cbc innovis every year to have an account and then we pay for credit reports as we pull them in the realm of about i think it was eight dollars a report is that i think it's about eight dollars a report for when we pull credit reports so that's funding in there in anticipation of having new loans coming in and, and pulling people's credit reports. Um, UCC renewals, we, it, it costs $40 each UCC to renew it. Um, we have to renew them every couple of years for collateral. So that number is based on the number that we know we're going to have to do next year to renew and then also um, padded it with some funding for um, new UCCs. Should we have new loans, we have to file new UCCs. Um, technology assistance um, stayed the same. We seem to be about there. Um, you'll notice, if you're looking at the one that I handed out versus one that you may have printed out yourself, originally there was $100 in for the website, and um, the contract we have with Nolio is actually $425 per month to maintain our website, so I increased that, and I just took that extra $325 out of travel and training so that it the overall budget um, still balanced. The operating expenses again has we've increased to twenty thousand, and the travel and training came down a little bit. Um, we did throw AGFTC in here just to show um, that that it is a cost, but it's a reimbursed cost. So um, we're at about four fifteen eight thirty for the regional planning board. If you look at the revenue expenses, so with everybody having signed the five county MOA, these are the dollar amounts that were calculated in that spreadsheet that each of the counties agreed to. So this is where everyone will be at for this year. Um, the EDA planning grant is good to go and it's good as a three year grant. So we know we have the 70,000 for uh, 2020. The DEC planning grant, the good thing with that is we're allowed within that, even though they give you your dollar amount every year and it's usually pretty consistent throughout the four-year contract you are allowed to move money um, from years so I actually budgeted to move some of the 2019 money into 2020 and the reason is because we have a lot of projects on the table right now that aren't paid for out of that grant that need to be done this year and that's where time and efforts going to be spent and build against those grants and then the leftover 604b money will be moved to the next year um, water quality grant admin. So these are things that uh, we will be doing next year, and you'll notice that the, it's gone up for the 2020 budget. So we have 30000 budgeted to help the town of Queensbury and um, our partners in Lake George to complete a Lake George assessment. Um, we also have funding in there for a Lake George economic study working with the village of Lake George. That Lake Champlain Basin Program grant that I talked about earlier that we received work will begin in 2020. So there will be, um, that's a two year, I believe. Um, so there will be 30,000 next year in staff time coming from that. The Washington County MS4 grant, the Champlain, the Upper Hudson WQIP, those are all grant admin contracts that we have. So they're grants that we have written, have been awarded to these entities 
and we're getting grant admin costs back from that. The Upper Hudson Department of State grant is going to wrap up in March of next year, but there will be some staff time spent at the beginning of the year that will be billed against that grant. Um, and we always get paid for putting together the North Country Stormwater Trade Show. What I didn't put in there is any potential revenue from the grants we're writing right now. So we're writing for should any of them be awarded in 2020, we will be able to bill admin off of that, but I didn't want to put a, a maybe in the budget. So um, there is the potential for more with that work, with the effort we're putting in right now. Interest from loans, it was always our goal to decrease the amount of money that we're taking from the interest so that it can stay and can rebuild the RLF so it'll become stronger. Um, so we're looking to decrease the interest from the loans. We also, as per our RLF management plan, are only taking 75% of the interest right now. Um, and, and some other ancillary things, the town of Screw and RLF. Um, Northern Borders Administration, those grants should be <coughs> announced by the end of July. Um, I didn't put in any that um, are within our region that we would anticipate. Um, because we just don't have the awards yet. So that may be able to go up depending on how many awards were made in our five county region. We are the administrators of the Northern Borders Regional Commission funding. Um, and then the host agency agreement from AGFTC putting our revenues at 415,834. Questions on all that? Mr. Henke. <coughs> You got nothing under professional services. Weren't you talking about hiring some consultants? To so that is for a grant we're writing right now that I don't know we're going to be um, award A. Okay, that grant's actually with Washington County, and so Washington County is going to hire uh, <laughs> the consultants. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I did that. And, and be reimbursed to the grant. So that wouldn't be coming from us, that would be Al. Yes, Drew. Uh, Beth, um, it's, you know how New York State is, and mm -hmm. bang. So sometimes there's a lag between, you, you know, you put in submitting your uh, request for payment for administration services, let's say for the water quality grants, and by the time New York State gets around to paying us for that. Um, so the, the so there might be a cash flow issue. Uh, do we have much in the way of a fund balance to help us assure that we get cash flows? So we so do. Gentlemen, if the gentleman across the table will close their ears for a minute, we we actually pay their bills. Right. So we have cash flow. Us getting reimbursed may stagger a little bit. Oh, okay. So I just want to note. So those well, I, I those. Wanna, I want to. I want to follow up on that question. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. As Al, as Al and the gentleman next to him is the treasurer's the two counties can attest to that our bills have been paid. And as soon as we get bill, uh, bills presented, we pay those bills within a week. So we have some cash flow. Um, very yep. generous of everyone to help us out. And we are looking at, we have started discussing in the future ways to sort of wean off that a little bit. Our one concern right now is because AFGDC is trying to spend down a lot of their backlog funds is that's not, this isn't the right time to do it. But I'll let, I'll continue with that statement on our financial health and fund balance that we do look halfway decent at this time. And no kidding aside, they, they are in a position to absorb uh, as long as it's not like uh, the dormitory authorities' three-year lag, they're, they're in a position that it, it's not going to hurt them currently. Okay. So I also want to note, with a lot of these that I have listed, we are not, the Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Planning Board is not the grantee. Someone else holds the grant, and we bill that person, and they pay us, and they wait for the reimbursement back. That's that's part of the deal. So sometimes they don't pay us until they get their money. So there is right, and there are sometimes that they don't pay us till they get the money. But for most of them, they're paying within 30 days of the invoice. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nola. Uh, I yield to Ron. <laughs> Ron, first, thank you. Uh, just uh, I'm glad to see you um, reduce the amount of the appropriation from the um, revolving loan fund. Uh, 
is the um, the ZDA provide us any guidance on that or what what's your sense of I mean I would hope that what we would be um, accessing there would be interest only right and, and then once we get to a certain point in time only a certain percentage of that interest against the size of the portfolio if you can see what I'm saying yeah so we actually set how much we take of the interest um, the EDA does say that if you're taking more than um, if you're taking a hundred percent you have to give a really good reason why a hundred percent for over a certain amount of time you then have to give them an explanation as to why so in the RLF management plan which the board adopted and the EDA approved it says in there that we will be taking 75 percent of the interest that comes in interest and penalties that come in for administrative expenses so that's what we've been doing so it, I mean the board could decide tomorrow that they want to lower it to 50 and that's what gets put in the RLF management plan and that's what we do but um, so right now we're at protect, 75. Protect the, the, um, the principal right and um, and then uh, take a um, percentage. I mean it, 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 it's kind of a, a, um, a moving target because a lot of it depends on how busy you are against the portfolio right absolutely and, where interest and how are. long how long the loans are, are and who, that, where they, they are in their loan Right. So it's, it's not a, a perfect science here, right. but if I, if I understand what you're saying, that th they do provide some guidance. Yes. Okay, thank yep. you. So two quick things. One, find four dollars in your revenue that <laughs> can match. Please. Okay. Uh, and two, anybody that knows me knows that this makes me happy, but I think you're right on your interest income based on our current take of 75%. We'll continue to take 75% unless the board changes the, the management plan. So at that level, right. you're light on the interest, so you have some, you have some room there, and that pleases me. So how much is the room? Uh, about fourteen thousand. So you're proposing we add fourteen thousand of the revenue line. We can talk about that in executive session. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I will entertain a motion to go into an executive session to cover a couple items. One which is a surprise to me from Al, but we'll go from there. So, uh, can I have a motion, please? You have to approve the motion. No, we can't approve the budget. Dave, did you hear Mike? Or do you need to approve the budget before you do that? No. No? Okay. We will defer till the end of executive session <coughs> to approve the budget, because there is one thing come up in revenue. Yes, Don. On the what? Why, certainly. My executive session is because the employment and contractual with the individual personnel. I'm not sure where Al's falls under. I'm not under Oh, that memory. There, there will be actual way to come out, I assume. This says something. Yeah, no. <coughs> Two, three, six, four, five, eight. All right, uh, motion by John Fry. Do I have a second, please? No, Tracy can't. Oh, Tracy, you can't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need a second from <laughs> Christy. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Carrie, so Allison and Beth and <laughs> Carrie, and put us offline, please. Dave, do you want the ex officios to stay? Ex officios are more than welcome to stay. Thank you. <coughs> I thought I had a shot. I thought, I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I bring a cheat sheet? So close. I hate to jinx us, but it should be quick. No, don't say that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> don't say that. I promise someone two hours, and, an hour and 45 minutes. We're getting close. Switch on the desk. Okay, I will. Uh, Did it just turn the light on? Yeah. I will entertain a. Only that. That's recording. Okay, recording. okay. Oh, and that turns light. the light on. All right. Okay, I will entertain a motion and <laughs> discussion from the executive session. 
John Fry, what is your motion, please? Oh, you want me to frame what we said? You want to amend the salary please. schedule to reflect the executive director's salary of 78000 That's what I heard him say. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Do I have a second? Thank you. Yes. Mike. Pete? Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Gary? Uh, before we adopt the 2020 budget, do we want to make an adjustment on the set, on the interest, like you've discussed, Al? No, I, I would actually just I would actually drop the interest to four dollars to make the thing balance and be done. <laughs> All right, do that. Will you please? Don? Yes, I will take the four dollars off of the interest. I'll take unbudgeted revenue all day, kid. <laughs> Can I have a motion to adopt the proposed 2020 budget? By Patty. Do I have a second? By Edna. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. What else do we need? <laughs> other, do I have any other things to come before the board? Next meeting date, we're into October. <laughs> October is... Is October good for everyone in uh, 15th on a Tuesday? October 15th, going once, <laughs> going <laughs> twice, going third. Oh, quickly your head. All right, October 15th looks like. At 1 o'clock. At 1 o'clock. Hopefully in the big room. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Edna, do I have a second? Thank you for your time and injury. I appreciate it. Wow. And next next meeting we'll have uh, donuts for some outgoing members. <laughs> 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 <laughs>